are live. All right. Hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to alt.net April. Please pop a comment in and let us know that you're there. I've got my kids in the background to help out, so hopefully you can't hear them too much. Grab yourself a beverage and we'll get started soon. Let's see, we'll let people come in for a minute or two. I think we've got Richard in the audience, which is very exciting. Paul Richards had COVID, so he's out of the studio for tonight, but he'll be back next month and he'll be there to heckle us all from, uh, from the chat. Yeah. yeah, it sucks to be in the chat or the COVID, you mean, Richard? We miss you in here. Maybe we should have just had you in for, for you know, even if you didn't say anything, just have your face up here. Ah, oh, found the chat. There we go. <laughs> there go. There's a bit of a lag on the on the delay, but that's fine. I'll just leave that over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, we got Francis here. That's good. Hi, Francis. Have you had a haircut yet, Francis? <sighs> Madrid? What, really? Francis says he's in Madrid. All right. It looks like people have started to come in, so we'll get rolling. So, yes, welcome again. If you missed the first welcome, it is already April. And this is, I don't know, probably like year two of online alt.net. But we're still going strong. So today we've got an exciting presentation from Justin, who has kindly agreed to present on APIs today. And he's going to give us a nice code presentation. So I've seen already he's only got two slides and all the rest is going to be code. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Now, as usual, we've got our competition. So stay to the end and I'll ask you two questions based on the presentation. and you'll get to win one of the two JetBrain licenses to any of the JetBrain's products. So that's, uh, that's, that's coming up later. So let's see. And just check any comments here. All looks good. So we've got one question from Richard just before we get started. So this leads in quite nicely. Feel free to ask questions as we go along and I will surface them for Justin and he'll keep an eye as well, but mainly I'll represent it. So here we go, what is Justin drinking? Thank you, Richard, for getting the ball rolling and the heckling starting. All righty. Well, considering I'm actually from Queensland, we actually drink the good stuff. Where is it? Oh, there you go. We, we drink the Forex, which we actually don't do that. So <laughs> we don't actually drink Forex. Um, I'm actually drinking a, a Furfy Ale. Is, is my current <laughs> drink, choice. I got I got given those I got given those four X's and they've been in the fridge for about six months. So I thought I'll just bring one up anyway. If I get really desperate and the code demo start to fail, four X comes out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Normally I can't really drink and code because work they 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 drug test us, so that's all good. Oh really? How do they do it? Uh, at it, um, it's a government corporation, so they, they, you do you got a you got a policy, and they can get a little breathalyzer there, and so yeah, there's no there's no lunchtime liquid lunches. Uh, very unfortunate that, but you know, that's sadly. Even when you're working from home, there's still no. Yeah, yeah no, no, I definitely wouldn't do it from home anyway. But uh, luckily, luckily, it's only sort of a couple of days at home and a couple of days in the office, so it kind of breaks breaks up the day, so that's all good. Uh, all righty. Um, all right, you're ready to get started. So throw the slides up. I'll bring up the slides. All right, so over to Justin now. Here we go. I'll put you on top, Justin. Here you go. There we go. All right. So as um, James said, there's only was actually three slides. I threw another one in um, last minute just because I could. Uh, but effectively, the talk I'm, I'm doing tonight is just basically on the new .NET 6 uh, minimal APIs just to sort of show um, what the sort of advantages are 
are there any disadvantages? Uh, why you would want to consider doing that? Is it something you do for a greenfield project or is it actually something you can probably retrofit? So if I have time at the end, I'll sort of um, show a anonymized sort of production um, application where I've sort of went and took all our sort of stuff out and show you how we sort of took a, an existing um, API endpoint and refactored that to be minimal APIs, but we still kept the sort of legacy sort of stuff, which I'll go through anyway. Um, so as, as I said, Brisbane's really, really awesome. Um, I've been up here about six years. I was from Sydney, um, spent 20 something years of my life in Sydney, but moved up to Brisbane and we just had a lovely little flood in our area. Um, Unfortunately, that's my front door and it kind of went halfway up the house down on the first level, but that was all fun. Um, so I've got builders coming in tomorrow to finish off the chip rocking and do all that, but that's what we do we do here in, in Brisbane. We, we get flooded and we drink 4X, but yeah, go from there. All right, so that's it for the, the main slides. And the last slide will be just like a resources slide that I'll, I'll show sort of at the end. Other than that, we're gonna sort of get straight into um, coding and just sort of see what we're sort of looking at here. Okay, so everyone's very familiar with um, when you do the sort of a .NET you know, core or, or .NET 4.6 kind of um, API app, you'd effectively have your program and your startup. So your program effectively would be sort of your main entry point into the actual application. And it would create a host builder and you just choose how you want to sort of run it, you know, whether you're using Kestrel or whether you're using iOS, et cetera. Um, and then you, go, you create all these startups and then basically says, okay, now I'm going to go into my startup class and start, you know, start all the services. So we've got all this information, we start up and we've got to inject our configuration. We've got to configure our services. We're in this situation on a plain vanilla API file new. It was adding controllers. Then you've got to configure your application. What do I want to do? I want to sort of, you know, HTTPS. I want to use routing. I want to use authorizations. And then I want to map my controllers. And that's just the, you know, effectively the bootstrapping to get you up and running as a brand new user. Um, and the, the drama of that is what um, the Microsoft folks sort of thought the, the barrier to entry for brand new people who are coming in, uh, you know, looking at products like Node and stuff like that, who have a really quick, easy, light run, we're up and running. and Define an endpoint, um, so they kind of built out the sort of minimal APIs as a bit of a bit of a bit of a spike, and then suddenly boom, it got put into .NET six really really quickly, and I was like, wow, that was that was impressive. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll look at sort of you know what the what the differences is in there. So that's basically thing here. You've got basically standard weather controller. So we'll we'll look at this sort of standard weather controller, um, and then basically you've got the sort of you know the get to say get the, the data. So in this situation, it's just a you know the sample the sample app, and it has just basically a, a, a data model. Uh, but we want to sort of do a, a standard API, minimal API, and, and get running on that one there. So if I just sort of bring that up here. So effectively, um, to get up and running, you can kind of get really simple with application. So you basically do that and create your builder. Um, and that basically allows you to pass in the args. And this is sort of effectively replaces the sort of main um, entry point method. And you know you can overload it. You can kind of do sort of fancy stuff in here if you wanted. You can sort of do new web application options and stuff like that. If you want to sort of do fancy stuff and get access to it at all, but normally you just sort of web apps generally don't always pull in args that way. You normally will sort of inject them from variables, etc. Uh, and then effectively you just declare your app. Uh, uh, oops. App equals builder. Don't worry, it's not all typing. Um, I'm just doing the first will be just as an example, just to show you what the sort of thing is there. And then basically you can say app.run. And effectively that will actually run and build up a, a, a minimal API. But there's no actual endpoints declared. So you need to sort of def define it. So what we do is in this situation, now we've got our app there, we can sort of put a, a map get. And we say, I just want to do a map get. And in that situation, I'm just going to basically say my root sort of, uh, route and, and basically the new Lambda expression that they're sort of introduced for this. And you basically just can sort of return just a hello vault.net. Uh, and away we go. So effectively if we just, uh, oops, just cancel that. Had the wrong setup. That's gonna fail because it's trying to run the project. And then cancel the top. All right, so let's just debug that. 
Uh, screen resolution kill me here. Uh, here we go. All right. So effectively, when we start this up, there's, there's no, no actual anything about the actual application itself. It's just literally a vanilla application, very, very light. It'll pop up here in a second. You'll see effectively all the sun is just start the map. Um, dynamically injected, created the exe, starts it up and just gives you basically an entry point. And if we sort of go to that entry point, uh, go there, local host. Mm -hmm. Quickly, you just get your Apollo.net. Okay, so very, very um, plain and simple. That's effectively a couple of lines to have an entire application running. There's nothing else in that application except the actual um, program, and that's it. There's nothing in there. Um, now, if we sort of look at a, you know the file new, we're obviously we sort of thought there a file new in the new .NET space here will give you this kind of um, uh, sort of standard builder. So we just basically defined that builder before. But this situation here, though, is now it's adding a few extra services to the, the, the pipeline. So I'm saying, look, we want to have controllers. We actually want to have um, a swagger and a plan point. So kind of we'll talk about swagger in, in a little bit. Um, but effectively, it's good to sort of have something like that as part of your web API because then you want to be able to test the API. I'm going to use Postman as well, but it's good to sort of have that there. Um, just simple things here saying, look, if it is a development environment, then you, you use a swagger development tools, putting your standards in. We don't actually even need authorization in this particular one here. Um, mapping out controllers. So whenever you sort of have add controllers, you've got to sort of then do the middleware, which is the, the map controllers, and then run the app. And now, so we'll run this exact same sort of app with a little bit more there. And we'll debug. Start that up. Because there's actually swag has been added as middleware and a service, we'll actually spawn up a API endpoint. And effectively, now we've got a, a swagger URI. So we can see that we've got the controller for the get, get um, thing. We can try out our, our thing, and we can run it and basically get a, a response back from the, the server. Uh, we can do the exact same thing here. If we effectively open up Postman, um, do the same thing, get there, and uh, oops, just hide that. Disable SSL. We don't need SSL. It's Demos. Um, so effectively, yeah, so the get will sort of just return the same information from the API. All right, so that's a, sort of a simple file new, if you did a brand new file new.net 6 API. And then saying, well, how do you sort of set that up to be a bit, a little bit more sort of, you know, rather than sort of, you know, having all this in a controller? So this is a sort of standard old way mixed with the new way. So you've got your, your API um, minimal startup, but now you've also got your sort of legacy sort of controllers, et cetera. But if we want to sort of go into a little bit more, we can kind of go into this next level here, which is sort of, okay, well, let's let's break this out into a, a, a full minimal API is we can actually go through here and we can say, look, I'm just going to add um, a new class. We're just going to basically put the... Uh, Add a class. And a weather forecast. So effectively what we can do is from, from that point of view, so for the weather data now, so instead of having this 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 weather controller down here, this data, um, uh, where is it? Uh, so up here, oh, so this is basically static data up here. Effectively, we're going to take this this weather data up here, and we're just going to make this in here into a um, just a within a weather data class. So just basically expecting that's coming from a database, populate into your model, um, and then we've got the sort of weather forecast, which is effectively just our standard model that we had before. So we're not going to do anything different than that. We're just going to keep the same sort of model in there. But the difference being is with the controller now. So what we can do is we can go to the controller, um, and we can say, look, I want to grab this the code here. So in our main program here, we can actually go here and we can do that app dot map get as we did before. And effectively go through. 
and we can say we want to do the exact same endpoint and call this weather forecast. Okay, and if you notice before, what we had is in this uh, previous one here, even though we're not really using it um, in the controller, we actually were having the logger injected into the control. So if we wanted to add it logging into our app application, so we want to sort of test that we are, well, do we lose uh, dependency injection when we're actually doing a minimal API? Do we actually have a problem with that? Um, and the answer is no. Um, so we can sort of go into here, we can actually go through and actually um, do that sort of as a, um, a logger and we're logging a program. So basically roots or no. So program is kind of implied um, as part of that. And so, so now we're going to inject that and logger in there. And then we get the sort of exact same way we before. So when we did this lander before and we sort of did the, um, you know, return hello world, in this situation, we're just going to return a actual, you know, um, bit of code. So that code here that we had uh, in this controller, this return, we can now take that up to here and we can actually put that into here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we don't have the summaries there. Now we have we have this thing called data dot um, weather forecast. Sorry. Weather data should be weather data. Oh, got that bit out. Pick it up. Weather. So now we just basically got to just give it the full. Yes. So coming through. Is that working? You're not doing that. Well, it's not in there. Not successful. Oh, projection level. Okay. So, yeah. So, weather data, obviously, because it's um, private there, it's just a example. Go through. All right. So, now if we start this API, effectively exactly the same sort of thing. We haven't sort of lost anything. Um, if anything, we just sort of made it a little bit simple to sort of start up our API. And theoretically, should be able to just Run that. No, with the forecast. What I call it. Okay. If I can spell <laughs> forecast, and you get the same information back there. Okay, so all we've done is sort of broken out a little bit different. So just to recap on that quickly, and then we'll sort of move into some more advanced sort of stuff there. Effectively, we just we basically return that method. Now that that could go off and call any sort of other, you know method and service and we'll see that before. But now the difference being is we've now broken out our sort of, you know, whether data that can kind of become a repository, that can kind of thing, and our models can be sort of put away. Um, Justin, we've got a quick question here just from Francis. Yeah. So why is the logger being passed in the map kit? So that's the dependency injector part. We're not actually using it, but if we actually went into here, we can actually now can actually yes. Test, test use that. that actual logger so we can actually you know do that log you know and log a call to the output so you know test if we just do basically log information um, from there we do the exact same thing so quickly uh, semicolon. Uh, it's put the semicolon on the wrong spot oh what's it doing that why is it oh it doesn't want to let you put in the right spot Oh, okay, so returning there. Okay, two, two seconds to put up there. Okay. Anything stupid. Um, and then get it back up there. Oh, good. Have we lost anything with the base class? Was there anything that you'd use from the base class that we don't have anymore now? We're just in a, in a little lambda? You can actually still get that. So when we'll get we'll get further down, you'll actually show that you yeah. can actually still get more and more information. Um, so when you, you start to want to do sort of things. So in this situation, just to, just as a bit of a preview kind of thing, you can actually go into here, you can actually put into here and saying, you know, you still can actually use your, you know, um, uh, in this one. In a sec, I'll, I'll bring that a second. I'm pretty sure I did that in there. Uh, where are we? Two six.
Yeah, no worries if you want to get to it later. Um, yeah, we'll get we'll get to, we'll get to it later. But effectively, yeah, you, you can you can do your sort of attributes, etc. Um, and I'll and I'll show that with the sort of other ones which I'll we'll get into the. So, uh, yeah, just keep the demos flowing, so I sort of keep on track. Yeah, no um, worries. Okay, so effectively, that's just sort of you know swapping out the old from new and a combination of old and new in the same sort of thing. But now we're sort of getting to the basic sort of stuff. Sort of okay. What we've got here, so we're basically back to our, our, our starting point there. Um, but effectively, now what we want to do is we want to say, okay, so I want to I basically want to be able to sort of add dollars, basically add it as a service. So that's where you sort of when you add MVC and new controllers. Uh, we're not actually using the MVC component of it; we're actually just doing it sort of there. Um, and then we'll actually add the Swagger. Um, For us, if we want to sort of look at in, so if we can add books. Okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to basically say, okay, so we've, we've got that, we've got um, we've got the, the spawn of our app, so basically app equals builder. So we're going to take our builder and after we've joined our services and then say builder.build. Add configuration a little bit later, uh, and then basically say well, we're going to use Swagger. Use Swagger UI. So normally, just most most projects will have that. If you sort of want to have sort of APIs, um, it's just a good practice to sort of have your APIs defined so that if someone's consuming those. Okay. Now, so now we'll just go back on the standard map get. So we've already we're already done the sort of standard one here, which is basically um, basically a getter. Um, and basically flow from get, but not every call is a is a get. So if you think about it, oh, well, what's the next one? Map dot post. Um, so it's kind of exactly the same sort of situation. You can go, okay, uh, poster. Um, okay, but it's like, well, how does it get access to to all the, the information? Because when you're posting in stuff, you want to sort of be able to take stuff in. So we'll, we'll cover that in a second. Uh, but that just shows you that we have our sort of endpoints. Um, now, if I was to basically just run this, I'd just basically. Um, You've got a couple more questions as well when you when you get a set. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. What we got? Okay. All right. So we've got a question um, from Mr. Lord Teaspoon around the not found. And yep. We'll stuff. get that. Yep. We'll get all that. So we'll, we'll cover the the result OKs and not founds and stuff like that. Uh, so this is just sort of vanilla sort of stuff to start with, uh, just showing you sort of, you know, if we can kind of do the, uh, that's a getter. And yeah. if I, uh, is that on the same port or a different port? Uh, yeah. well. um, was it Francis was wondering just whether you can implicitly inject the logger everywhere without having to um, stick it in everywhere yourself. There are ways you can do that. You can sort of inject in the, um, in the actual handlers. So you can set set the handler to, to do that from there. Uh, normally, I, I would sort of you don't have to. We're not normally you wouldn't actually inject them always down at this sort of at this top level. This is just sort of showing that you can do that. Um, but I'll, I'll show you the, a more full fledged example where things are injected a, a little bit further down, where you actually need them closer to the sort of you know um, implementation. Fair enough. Uh, why is that not coming through with the getter? Oh yeah, to pull it from get. Um, yeah, and if I went to the the, the to the poster, you know, for a method not allowed. Okay, so it has to be a post. Okay, so if basically it takes care of that for you. It knows what the sort of um, needs to be done from there. So they're just a sort of standard stuff. But then we can sort of go. Okay, well let's get into uh, map dot get, and then you sort of say I want to do a sort of a just a, a standard book. I just uh, there, so I'm going to just do a, a standard result okay thing. So basically, you can say oh, I'm going to do that and result dot results okay. And so you can sort of see you've got all of the options of those of the not founds, accepted, etc. Mm -hmm. um, so you can sort of do the, the result okay, um, and then you can basically yeah sort of just say well I want to actually do that, and I want to basically spawn up and say I want to just create a sort of new thing, and you can basically say stage equals you know 
so they're kind of a way to sort of um, get the uh, missing one there. Okay. Uh, that's what way that object. Uh, and then you can sort of say, okay, well, what about asynchronous calls? You know, can you do asynchronous calls? So effectively, you can do the exact same thing here. Um, it, you know, effectively, just go here, basically async. Um, and yeah, simple as that. You can go, go through from that. Or if you want to sort of actually you know, confirm that, do that map. It and basically go slow. You would say from there, uh, would say async, just basically play that. And then here we can put our, our wafer in, in here for the await cast of play. And then you, then you can return a, you know, results, but okay. Basically, you know, and you know that it's slow. So that's just sort of starting to you know, step it out a little bit more there. Um, now we can sort of begin to think, well, what, what about taking parameters? You know, taking, you know, they can come from the body, come from the post, from query string, et cetera. So we can go you know, app, you know, map dot it. Um, so we can basically say, basically if I do something, you know, I've, I've actually declared a few things in here before, like names and stuff like that. So uh, if I just sort of, you know, do this, I can kind of say, well, actually I want to take in an age as a, as a um, showing the age, and I actually want it to be defined as an integer. So I actually got kind of like a validation on it. Um, and then basically say, look, I want an age integer, uh, come through here and if, come through and saying, okay, now what's going to happen here? Return, and then basically put age was. Um, so that basically sort of a way we can sort of do that. So now if I sort of come through here, um, and call that and saying show age, Basically, if I do, now if I go and do something silly like in here and I could basically go, you know, not, method not allowed, opposite, oh, sorry, it's post, um, it'll say not found. You know, right, but I, I put, I did, I called that method. But because it wasn't defined as a, an integer, it didn't actually map the route. So it's sort of making taking care of the route for you. So it knows that it should be um, an integer variable um, going from there. So it's quite nice that you can sort of have that as a, um, you know, valid there. And uh, if we go in here, uh, but you can get a little bit more sort of fancy, you can kind of get into here to map it um, effectively and you're basically saying, look, I want to have only characters and effectively um, for the, an endpoint um, of input and doing a regex. So you can basically effectively have a regex in here. Um, You know, it's not quite hard because you do it all. Not too many. Yeah, quickly there. Bring, so now we're taking the input string and then go through. Let's see. Returning the import string space is come back and saying, you know, what, what we return back on that. Uh, that's fine. Yeah, you can do other things too. So, a bit more fancy one here, you can do the exact same thing here, but you might sort of say, look, I want to actually do, you know, a year input and saying, look, years, uh, year, and basically saying, what's a year, year, and you can kind of go into sense. There's a few constraints here, basically do a range and saying the input must be between, you know, 2020 and 2025. So you can kind of, you know, get a simple validation from that from there. Um, I'll show a little bit more about fluent validation a little bit later, sort of uh, as, you know, um, validation library, but you can kind of get that um, notion from there. 
Um, but then if we were to say, okay, now I want to use something like a service, you know, I'm going to go call an endpoint, I'm going to call database, etc. cetera. Um, so what we've got here is uh, just sort of step. I just, and just there. quickly, one more yep. question. Um, yep. A little bit of what we're doing currently, but I thought I'd just surface it before, before they're waiting too long. So they're just asking around, um, since, since the startup class is no longer present, um, then is there a new way of doing the ASP.NET core integration testing via web application factory? Uh, there is a way. I'll, I'll see if I can sort of show a little bit about the testing later. Uh, you can effectively, uh, one of the, the ways I've, I've seen do it, you can kind of in, inject and take in um, and do, you know, mock out the actual HTTP client and test the endpoints without actually um, doing it. So it's quite a nice way to sort of do that. You do actually have the ability to swap that in and out. Um, so it's not sort of fully locked down. Pretty well, you know, but everything you can sort of think about, you can do in 99% of the cases, it'll pretty well do it. They're saying that, you know, minimal APIs is meant to cover 80 to 90% of use cases. Uh, that was the kind of the, the main goal. But even just literally last week with the .NET preview 4, they added some new um, validation stuff where before you used to have to do kind of um, a bit of um, reflection on it and stuff like that. Now that's kind of getting a bit more native. So they're going pretty hardcore on it going forward with the .NET 7. Um, which, you know, I think there's taking a bit more, you know, features from the .NET 10 and, you know, that kind of space that makes it, these things a bit easier to, 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 to abstract out and do the, the syntactical sugar for you. <coughs> uh, yeah, so if we go basically here, so basically we're going to take in, say, a string of, you know, search. Um, so in this situation, let's say, but now I've got a sort of a, a user group service. So, you know, user group service. Um, it's in this situation, it's, okay, what are we doing in that user group service here? So basically you're saying, look, you know, if, if search is now, uh, I like the is rather than actually the uh, equals equals, quite nice, you can get a return results of not found. So you can kind of, you know, get that kind of um, simple there's part of your um, return, or you can say, look, okay, the results are you know, equals, you know, my user group service. Now get in there and dot, you know, and it's, it's, it was expecting search to be done and taking in that search value. Okay, uh, why does it get a little thing up here? What's in there? Um, okay, oh, it's because it's not returning result yet. Uh, return results, okay. And then basically results. So simple as that. We can kind of do the search, and if effectively we can kind of go and basically Didn't start. No, oh, okay. Body's inferred. Me. Okay, so this is where we're getting down to a situation of okay. Okay, so body was inferred, but the method doesn't allow inferred body parameters. Um, so that's where you get into a situation of um, it's trying to sort of find a for you in this situation. I'll just hide this and make it a bit more, a bit more room. So it's saying I'm expecting the the, sh the search to be there as part of the string and. Okay, uh, but you can kind of put in here uh, from from query. So you can kind of put this helper syntax there. You can kind of make it a little bit easier to say this is where I'm expecting to come from, and you can kind of do the extra information saying, look, I want to rename the actual parameter to s. Um, if you want to sort of make it a bit easy. Uh, they're kind of the things you, you normally would do on your sort of on your controller and you would put your attributes and saying, oh, I want to rename the, the controller method. I actually want to you know, change the name. I want to say it's from body. I want to say it's from the actual, um, from the header, uh, which I've got an example just coming up in a bit, a bit from there. Um, so that's from, yeah. Oh, so that, that was kind of 
Um, I think that was there, so I was doing that and effectively body, um, basically raw. Uh, Screwing up here somewhere. Maybe I can start it, that uh, would help. Alright, I'll have to think about what I've done wrong with that particular thing. Uh, Anyway, so I'll just get rid of that one for the moment. Uh, but the service here, I'll just show you what was the behind the scenes. So effectively the name service here was effectively just a user group service that was, was spawned up and just basically had a list of hosts just as in there, it's just a bit of a test, basically the search was just saying, hey, call the search and, and bring back a value. There's nothing fancy about that. Um, it was just showing you how to inject that there. Uh, now if we sort of get into the sort of, the, uh, and say, you know, if I want a fancy endpoint, I want sort of something fancy and then basically it's on a route path. Uh, yeah, that's all I think I didn't do. I didn't sort of do the, the brackets around it, but uh, that's why I'm doing demos on the weekend. Um, okay, um, and then but now we can sort of go to, into here. We can say, okay, well, I've got a string and route path. And then I say from query, Right. In this situation, I basically just did another thing. So I basically created a random number generator. Um, and it, uh, um, in. And basically, this is just saying I want to get you know, the, host, the host details from the actual header, just something a little bit different. And let's get the first name. Uh, now that I've got that, I can then say, okay, I, I want to get access to information. And we can turn our path. And now we can get to our access to that wrap path. Let's say I want to get basically the query. And saying that was query. And from the actual random number that came back. Um, David's saying we're right. missing our open parenthesis at the yep, start of the that's right. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yep. So dot, and then basically get my random number, and then basically my host. Actually, so if I go that now with my sort of fancy path. Oh my goodness, it's, it's suddenly, I wasn't doing this on my demo. I think I've missed something up here. Um, oh, that's right. No, sorry. Okay. 
that was why I did it. So what I forgot to do is I forgot to go back up here and I forgot to add my services. So I needed to add my head. At Singleton, and I needed to actually add my random number generator. I need to have access to my service, and the other one failed before was because I didn't actually add. Uh, I see. I didn't actually add my user group service, so it actually didn't know where the root. So, was, so that's what I was trying to do. Is it was trying to be very smart about it. It was trying to think, oh, I don't know what this user group service is, and it was trying to think it was actually a variable or a query string or from in some in some property in the body, not the actual injected to service. Uh, so that was kind of a big stuff on my part. All right, so we've got here, so basically fancy path slash route, and then it's pass and then just pass Bob. Bob's not working, and uh, query. Test. Bob. Route path. Fancy route path. Let me something else down here. No. Maybe it's because I got the, the body in there. No. What have I done? Do we need that header? No, I don't need a header for that. Uh, the header will have the, the value of the, the host. Mm, um, no, it's yeah. So, fancy path. Oh, just start on different paths on that. 5001. Fancy. Oh, fancy. Oh, God. I'm getting. There you go. So it truly was just me being fast. Okay, so fancy Bob. So basically he's picked up the path is Bob, so it can automatically grab that from there. Basically can grab the test from the query string. You can basically get a random number and get the host details. Um, every time you run it, get a different number, stuff like that. So that just shows you that you sort of, from a um, point of view, you can define sort of where information's coming, makes it a little bit more sort of, a bit more advanced from there. All right. Um, you also do have access to the context. So you basically if you do map get. So some people like to actually get access to the, the raw level and, and dynamically do their, their kind of thing. So if we just sort of map and go get context, you can kind of just basically infer, you know, basically I just want to and basically then you can basically say, okay, now we want to use that context. And then basically you get access to everything you need from, from the actual context itself. So you can kind of get down to the lower levels if you need these from there. Uh, so you basically do, you know, go to the response and basically write, you know, back to the you know, right async, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hello context. I won't run all these examples because it's just sort of self-explanatory. It's sort of just saying run those. Um, um, other sort of things there. So if you want to do something um, simple, if you want to basically do another thing, if you want to do like a redirect, uh, you might say, look, I want to say, and this is probably where it comes in really good too. If you want to do it like a, a redirect of, and you basically just do a lambda and you're saying basically just say results or redirect. Uh, and you basically just say, I'm going to redirect that to, you know, another path, you know, test path, you know, and they'll say, look, I want to make that a, a permanent 307, or 301, sorry, 301 permanent redirect. Um, so it's quite good if you're actually doing a migration of a project and you want to change endpoints and you don't want to mark them obsolete, et cetera, you can kind of go, you know, something nice and simple with the minimal API to sort of add that to your, um, to, to your project. Uh, probably missing it right here, so, yeah. 
All right, uh, so yeah, so that logger, I showed you the logger before, which was effectively the, you know, injecting the, the iLogger in it, which was um, kind of going through here. So you can say, look, I want to also inject iLogger into there um, and then say the program. So we've worked that before and then you've got access to that to, to go from there. Um, and then you can basically, if you want to use your controllers like before, you can sort of just do app.mapcontrollers down here. So that will give you access to any controllers you want. And I'll just show you something there. So that's just kind of like the middle API. Um, then we sort of have a, I want to just basically did a sample. So a lot of these samples are based on a, a project I'll, I'll give a reference to uh, from YouTube videos and training from um, Nick Chapsis. He's, he's quite sort of, you know, good in the .NET sort of training space. Uh, and a lot of these sort of ways of learning doing this was quite from there. Um, so in this situation we've got here, we've got basically a standard sort of, um, right, App and save, save me writing everything. So effectively, it's already got the, the initializing database for the, the hero database, et cetera, and stuff like that. So we're not worried about that. Basically, a list of Marvel heroes, name, superpowers, weapon, um, and basically just service that says, you know, standard. So this is where we've moved the services down here to say, look, you know, I want to basically create a hero, um, insert into the database. I want to get it by a name into a search, et cetera. I want to do that. But I want to sort of have all these endpoints accessible to the minimal API. Uh, but also, I want to have some sort of validation on there. So in this situation, we've got a validator here. So basically saying, look, um, I'll just put a thing saying, you know, this got to be pretty well a you know, plain name with spaces, no hyphens, exclamation marks, or anything like that. Um, and it must have a superpower. You, you can't not have a superpower if, you, if you're a hero. Um, so if we just sort of, you know, take a look there, uh, I'll just delete my DB, let it create, create it from there. Um, Actually, give me two seconds. I might just sort of go through and I'll just, just in essence of time, I'll obviously just copy and paste all this here. Copy and paste on the wrong machine. Uh, uh, two seconds. Just save about five minutes of typing. Uh, you don't want yeah, to see what right. Sarah is wondering if you'll stick your code on GitHub afterwards or perhaps it's already there. Yeah, I will. T I will tidy it up, and I will most likely put it on GitHub. And here, I'm... all right. Just here, and OneDrive. And Francis was. I uh, know we got the answer. All right. What was the error? Answer. Uh, it was just a question around um, the yeah. Nick, the Nick's last yeah. name. But, um, yeah, it's, it's already been answered. Yeah, I've, I've got links in the I get links in the slides afterwards, and I can post them in the chat so you can sort of go look them up. Um, he's got a like a, a course, and he's got YouTube videos, and his YouTube videos are um, really really nice. So in this situation here, um, effectively sort of using full validation uh, makes it a bit easier sort of for uh, validation, and effectively everything we've done here before. But the other difference is now is we're basically just adding a, a SQLite connection factory. So just saying, look, give me a database connection. Uh, database initializer, effectively saying, if the database doesn't exist, create the database. Uh, and effectively then adding my hero service. Uh, also it's saying, fluent validation, so you have this, this sort of um, extension method, which says, go through the thing and look for anything that is a validator. So this basically, this validator, anything that implements a, a validator, go and grab um, that in, and, and start, it, start it up there. Um, so effectively what we've got here is basically just a map post. So here is, so this situation here is we're taking in a, a hero object, uh, we're taking in a hero service, which is automatically injected through the DI container, which we've set up top there, and the validator. So we're defining these all here, uh, and then basically saying, okay, I want to see, is it valid? Um, so we'll sort of look there. If it's valid, if it's not valid, send back a bad request, and send me back the errors that come through, and we'll, we'll test it in a second there. Uh, and then effectively saying, otherwise, create, create my hero. Um, and it's saying, if there was another thing, a hero can not exist twice. So there's a you know, double, double checking this sort of thing there. Um, and then basically it'll, it'll pass back a, a, a credit endpoint for that. Um, so just basically, uh, debug.
Let's give us time. All right, so now we've got our heroes. So if I message to do a, a get on heroes, it'll go to the database and saying, if nothing there, it's just empty because it just created it on the, on the initialization from there. So you see here um, in the solution, um, now that heroes DB came back because it just got, got, got created there. But we need to create a hero. So what we're basically going to do is a, is a put, or a post, sorry. Um, we're going to post in here and basically just basically passed in um, here um, I'm supporting media. What's going on there? Raw. Oh, Jason. All right. So it just shows you now. Okay. So now we're, we're going here, basically saying we can see our hero. So our hero object's been passed through. It's got names of powers, bonus. It automatically done the binding for us. The hero service exists. Um, so we go from there um, to that database. And we've got a validator. Okay, so if we basically go through the validation here, um, yep, saying it's created, and we go through and saying, yep, all good and happy days. So continue on, and effectively it's returned what was actually created. Okay, so we just quick, quickly create a couple more uh, there. Get the breakpoints, we don't need to worry about anymore. All right, so that's that. Let's get that. So get here. So now this one, we've got a hyphen that which I defined as a as a as a, as a fancy character. So when we go to that there, we're just saying it's a bad request. Okay, so saying, hang on a second, name property, no fancy characters in there. So it's kind of a nice way to sort of add the, the validation on there. Um, and then basically saying, here's you know, everything about it, what the properties are. So it's quite a good way to, to push that information back to the end users to work out what was, was, was going wrong with that. Uh, I can kind of get around that by just saying, look, you know, I'm not going to change the red deck, but effectively I'll just add it in, in that particular way. Uh, and then we basically just go through here. Um, Just add another cap in there. But now what we want to do is we want to basically say, look, I want to um, go through and I want to get a list of my, my heroes. So basically get back to my get heroes, directly there, nothing there. So you see the list of heroes that come come back from the database. So something nice and simple there. And next one down. So there's created, got a list of heroes. We want to search on heroes, so basically effectively saying, look, I want a search term heroes. So effectively I can say, well, actually, I want to say anywhere they're a captain. Okay. Don't make me a liar. No, here it might be a zero search term, uh, search term. And you can see only Captain America and Captain Marvel came back. So it's just it's using a different sort of endpoint based on the, the actual routing. So a lot of this is about the routing. It's more just sort of the, the, the important sort of parts to know exactly what's happening behind the, the magic behind the scenes. Uh, we can also do sort of, you know, I want to get a specific hero. So if I basically want to get a specific hero and I want to get actually black Panther, I can sort of effectively call directly on that. Uh, but I can also go through here and I see where I say, um, you know, put uh, Black Panther, but effectively I want to make Captain Panther. You know, something you know, but effectively now it's Black Panther's got different things, so I kind of patched it. You know, uh, put put that data back there. Um, and if I sort of you know get get Black Panther again, and see he's got the you know Captain Marvel sort of um, data. And I could say, you know, look, I also want to delete. I don't sort of like my Panther. He's gone and no content. And um, so why can't he be deleted? Um, oh, okay, because I've changed it to Captain Panther. Yeah. Off script, and that's what happens. Okay, not found. You're being evil. Um,
So it must have played me to an email. Coach to a blade map. Hero, you didn't hear a name. All right, so it's probably because I actually had a body on that. So heroes and delete and America. Oh, sorry. Um, two F4 no content. So it actually has deleted it and it's come back saying, okay, now there's no content in the database. If I try to delete it again, you get a 404 because it actually has actually deleted it. So it's just me being stupid. I actually physically just practically deleted everything in the database almost. So if I look at my heroes again, um, uh, each of a group and Captain Marvel in there. So there's only two left after going through just deleting those. Uh, so that's kind of like a, a nice simple way to do that. And so, so that so this is basically that's just a you know, simple sort of thing. But it, your endpoints are nice and neat there. Um, it makes it a lot easier to sort of spawn those up. Now let's get a little bit sort of fancier. Um, just because we've only got a couple minutes left, I'll just go into a more advanced project. So this is kind of based off what we actually do. Um, Thing and I just had to remove sort of all things. So I'm not actually going to run the actual endpoints, but I'll just sort of run through and show you how we've structured the code and using this to a little bit more advanced with the actual um, some of the questions you've asked about the actual um, you know the validation. Yeah. Um, so I was just wondering about using spaces in the name. I'm guessing it's just encoded. Um, it just will make encodes it for you as part of it. So. Normally, you'd probably be calling like on a, a Google or a, a, an ID or something like that. That was just because I was just, you know, wrote that up pretty quickly. So I was just using examples and copying and saying, oh, I'll just do a standard get in, in points. Yeah, and Richard's put in a mm -hmm. encoding here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, do that in the browser or Postman for you. Yeah. All right, so we have a sort of a, a large sort of API project, which effectively, so what we've got is here. So if we sort of look at what we started with here, so basically we swapped out our logging framework. Uh, we use Siri log uh, because it's a lot sort of uh, nicer and we enrich you know, all our, our calls with information. So we basically only want to see higher level Microsoft stuff um, and only when it's warning. Uh, but effectively the environment. So we're basically enriching with the, the configuration so we know what environment the actual, um, you know, logs from and you know the name of the actual property for the, the calling application um, and then we basically we, we, we read our configuration that says oh this is where the, the six server is and stuff like that uh, and this basically just this message here just logs it up thing saying hey this application is starting up on this on which machine so it tells us where where this sort of this thing uh, so this is where we're just sort of injecting you know minimal api so same sort of thing host dot use serial log uh, and then basically adding logging and saying, you know, we'll make the dispose of it so it basically can flush when it's um, doing the, the logging request. Uh, we've also got some services in here. So we've customized services, we have application health checks. So effectively, we probe all of our systems so it knows if the database is offline, if the endpoints offline. So we use API management with Azure. So we want to know well, when we've deployed it between the actual environments, did it, you know, something happened, did it break in test, did it break in production, those kind of things. Um, and then basically, Add validators. So this add validators is kind of just making it simple there. Uh, we've got a you know another service we say is it in test mode. So we can kind of when it's in test mode, it mocks out database stuff you know, when it's just you know, testing um, to go through. Um, and then you know options when it's sort of you know what's the options of the actual service. Uh, you just inject those into the service. So these are just all the services. So quite a lot of stuff you can sort of you know you don't lose anything. So we're you know, we're using auto mapping to to map our profiles. We've added a memory cache which we actually just use for you know speeding up requests. Uh, we're adding our Swagger um, definition so we can kind of see that. Uh, and then we basically add our own services. So we've broken them out into different ways. So basically, effectively, we get config specifically. So we have particular services and we're saying, look, you know, I'm going to add a uh, a sales service, uh, and in that situation, this is where it's basically saying, okay, this particular service is going to take care of all the stuff to do. So basically saying, well, this service connects to this connection string, um, and this is where it gets its options from. So it goes to the, the config file and looks for the sales service uh, thing. Basically then configures Azure client. So it's saying, look, this one actually, this particular service talks to Azure because it needs to have access to the blob and the queues to be able to read off queues and, and write to blob storage. Um, and then basically, yeah, it's got to, you know, our, testing the sales service, the sales service. So basically we add in the test stuff there if we want to swap it in there while we're doing some testing. Um, and then basically adding in the sort of all services required. Um, and then basically, yeah, this is just the, the health checks that we sort of have dynamically building. This is just sort of a nice little thing you can sort of uh, do with the pen injection with 
systems. And yeah, we look at you know different databases. You know, is it, is Azure online? Is it is the database online? So and so basically, just constantly you know, pulls that information. Um, so then we sort of you know go okay, well now we're going to sort of you know add stand application layer or sort of core services in our core services here. This is where we go through and say okay. This is where we set up the memory cache. You know what cache, what cache service we're going to use. So we set up our own cache service. Um, you know what environment there is. So we we get a configuration for a particular environment. Saying if it's dev, test, production, do these different things. This is where we add in the optional, you know, heartbeat logger to say, you know, go through and test it every five seconds or every minute or every two things or where which locations. Uh, we add in this background services basically where it gets the the, the timer for the actual um, services, and that's where you sort of get the yeah. So you can kind of you know, inject all of these. So all these things that you would probably normally do at the highest sort of level as part of the program and startup, these are we've broken out into separate services. So we're kind of you know, doing things like here, like we're preloading information. So stuff that can be cached, we, we preload at a startup of the application because stuff doesn't change quite a lot. Uh, uh, or it might change every couple of hours. So we can just you know, cache it where you go. Uh, and then basically we had a, a mock service. So while we're developing these, we actually... When we're building end APM endpoints, we actually will mock it out, and then we'll give that to the other developers to consume it, and they'll choose the mocked data service. And we kind of got a data service, which effectively, if we we look at that, we have a data service that um, it goes through and it, it mocks it mocks out different sort of you know dynamically deals. Um, so effectively, it goes through and says, I want to you know test all these kind of deals and, and gives you know fake information kind of thing or, or information is kind of like close to being real life. It doesn't want to actually um, give you information that's just boring or the same information every time. So we actually dynamically generate, you know, when we're doing like life prices. So we have a thing for up here if, um, for, you know, I'm, I'm in the energy market. So we use, we use um, life prices from the energy market and we want to sort of, you know, get the life prices. But we also have a, a mock data for, um, you know, getting uh, not just from a database, but actually, uh, you know, data that sort of looks very similar to what it actually will be when it actually gets the real data put into the database. Um, so it sort of speeds up development, speeds up sort of there. So you don't lose out on sort of adding those services in there. Um, then effectively, yeah, we go down to sort of thing, which basically we, we're, we're customizing the, the hosts, so we're overriding the, the, the headers and we put certain stuff in headers. We have a bit of extra security and stuff like that. So uh, we use a combination of multiple things. We basically have an API key, we have whitelisting, we have um, you know IP white policies and stuff like that. So we kind of can kind of do all that. Then we get into the sort of, you know, the rest of the stuff, the Siri log, the you know, middleware. So we basically, you know, what happens? So this is where you would overwrite the sort of the request header. So the request header stuff, you can say, look, every request is a logger. So that's where you were saying, you are saying, can I do the logger on every single sort of, um, you know, process? Um, that's where you sort of can go through saying, well, when it going through, is it, you know, is it a protected endpoint? So we have defined in config certain endpoints that can't be logged um, because we don't want any information from that being logged because it might be calling something secure. Um, and then basically doing all of the, the information about it and setting up the response, et cetera. Um, so that's quite nice from there. Um, yes, I won't be sharing this, this code for this thing. This is that best you'll see is on the screen. Um, you know, setting up, you know, default files, state files, authorization. So you, you, you can set up your standard authorization as you normally would. Um, you, you get the same sort of information where you sort of have your, your, your headers and stuff like that and say, I want to um, put that there. And then, yeah, you can kind of have like an overall, you know, flush and everything and, and shut down gracefully, whatever happens um, when it goes through from there. Um, so yes, yeah, so if we go to core services, I think that's sort of here. We just basically go through and saying, you know, initialize preload services, uh, and it goes through and gets a list of all the preload services. So if you sort of look at what's going through, what's preloaded, um, and it, there's these heartbeat services and just start up at, at, at startup time. Um, basically, so it injects config in for it, says this is what needs to be done from that. Um, and then basically says, okay, now I've done it, I'm registering that task and gets the intervals, how long it does it, et cetera, et cetera. So it can be different per, per environment. Quite a nice way to sort of inject that in there. Um, just to yep. finish soon. Yeah, so I think that's pretty well covers a lot of it. There's a bit more in regards to testing. Um, I'm sort of covering this. Um, so, 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 but you can kind of, we use a thing called, um, it's quite nice one of um, 
just is another little tool if you guys want to look up call one off effectively you can have it it goes through and says i'm going to pass back this or if it can't get this if it comes back now pass back this so all of our calls pass back uh if it can't if it fails it'll pass back an ex a custom exception object so the json will come back with a special um config of that which will make it sort of nice and easy for um you know debugging etc like that all for consumers of our endpoint uh, so the last last just sort of slide here is just effectively if you want to look no more as minimal docs the so the actual official docs uh oops go back um play from here from here uh so the official docs have a lot of examples on them uh very very good starting point as i said nick chaps his, his youtube channel his youtube channel not only just for minimal api he's just an absolute legend in the um the, the dot net space um can't give him much kudos he's i put him in the league of like david fowler and um um uh brain, brain here um damien edwards um and then basically his course so if you want to get a really really in-depth course which covers way way more than that um with like extending apis etc uh it's like 50 pounds or something like that so it's kind of you know get a company to buy that for you and you'll get you know all this information about that um, and there's a david failure you know, just bring that up there minimal apis at a glance he has this gist which is pretty cool and effectively it lists all these kind of things here it's where getting these samples from basically you know defining ports at startup and stuff like that um you know listing on multiple ports wild cards um, you know, adding certificates, et cetera. So it's quite nice there. You know, config is code, getting the configs, you know, from your different things. Um, you know, what environments. Yeah, so the, all these, you know, this is just pages and pages and pages of all this stuff that you can actually just do within the actual in, um, minimal API. So definitely thing, and this is kind of like, you know, just showing you, you know, all the standard stuff. So a lot of this is where this image comes from. Um, you can do this thing like with names quite, a, that's a good one I've, I've seen recently where you can kind of give friendly names for your links. So when it comes back, it gets a link there. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Um, further reading on that, um, any questions, happy to read it out, reach out. Um, my you know, Twitter, I'm trying to sort of not be so much a Donald Trump Nazi. Um, effectively, yeah, if you just sort of reach out, Zero Hash is my sort of Twitter, Twitter username. Um, but I do, I do get upset about, you know, stuff on that, but, um, yeah, I, I do post geeky sort of stuff there. Uh, in my spare time, I'm actually building a unity game. Um, so sometimes sort of, you know, that's my sort of passion hobby and I'll be doing a YouTube channel on building the actual unity game, um, uh, soon. So one day I might come back and do something on unity. Uh, any, any other questions? Any questions from the crowd? We've got to thank you and I'll. Um, my thank you. That was a really interesting presentation. So, thank you very much. And uh, you know, you did it all live and debugged it all live, which isn't easy at all. And it all worked out so very well done. Mm. Oops. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I've always been wary of doing coding demos live, but I, I feel that sometimes you, you've got to sort of hack around and play with the code and look at the code and see type to sort of sometimes see it rather than seeing a big splash of code on the screen and then someone talking through it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's definitely shows place. you know what you're doing as well, which is which is the best thing for a presenter. Very good. Oh, we got one more question. Hang on. Um, oh yeah, so just for the slides and resources and um, code, yeah, if you can just post on Meetup a comment in the like in this month's Meetup with the with yep. the links for those. That's yep. the best yeah, I'll way. I'll tidy it up and I'll probably try and put some more comments in there so you just explain what each individual thing does. Um, and then I put the resources in there and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll put it up on the GitHub for you and you can have a look. That, that sounds good. Um, and Mr. T Lord Teaspoon says, what have we got? Oh, no, he's just talking about yeah. the sum of. The one of. The one, sorry, the one yeah. of. Yeah, we've actually, it's really funny. The the, the guy that introduced it, yeah, um, it's like one of, it's normally like one or another, but he's actually overloaded all of it to like one of, one of, one of, one of, one of, one of, one of like, so you can actually have like, this or this or this or this or this. It's kind of like you know <laughs> a correlate statement of like if this is no, I'll go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one, and that way you kind of it's a it's a way to handle you know a, a thing. But yeah, changing all the legacy APIs to be the same response signature was kind of like an interesting endeavor. All right, maybe in the interest of time, we'll switch over to the to the uh, giveaway. So, first question: Are you ready? Keyboard's ready, fingers ready. 
Uh, hang on, Richard's promised to be co-hosting next month. Sounds good. We miss you, Richard. Um, sorry, back to the competition. So what's the advantage of the new minimal API? This is an easy one. First answer. Less code. All right, Lord Teaspoon. That seemed like the biggest advantage to me. Yeah. It's actually faster too. It's actually um, because it doesn't go through, if you don't go through the controllers, it actually, they work it's about 10% faster. Mm. It looks like JavaScript. Yeah. It looks <laughs> like Sinatra and Ruby as well, just for. It's actually very similar to like something like Nancy and stuff like that. Like it's yeah. kind of very similar to that because they died and then. <laughs> All right. So I think Lord Teaspoon, you got in first. So uh, yeah. You no doubt need another license. There are some JetBrains products that you probably don't have yet. So, yeah, as usual, um, just send me a uh, email or meetup message just so I remember to send you the right stuff. Let's see. And next question. So, what was the more advanced validation called that Justin showed us? Anyone? That's <laughs> Who needs validation? Yeah. No. Starting with F. There you, there you go. We have a new winner. YKHUU, please send me a meetup message with your email address and I'll send you through the license. Well done. You are the winner. There you go. All right. So thank you everyone for uh, for coming along tonight and and listening to this presentation. I hope you learned a lot from it. And Justin will put the links up now. Of course, the opportunity is there for you to present too. If there's anything you want to talk about, uh, just send me a meetup message, and we'll talk about it and slot you in for one of the future months. As you can see, it's a very friendly group with plenty of uh, gentle heckling or at least uh, irreverent comments in the in the chat. So it's a fun place to, to give it a go. If you've got a first presentation as well, that's uh, it's certainly a good group for that. And yes, as Richard says, more topics are good. And thank you again, Justin. I really enjoyed it. No, no problem. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Night, everyone.